Greetings, drinking buddies. It is almost Christmas time, and we need to make some Christmas cocktails. Uh, first up is gonna be a Christmas martini. And in order to make a Christmas martini, you need to infuse some Christmas gin. So let's start there. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, drinking buddies. Today we're gonna to make some Christmas infused gin. And we're gonna begin by filling up a mason jar about a third of the way full of cranberries and some fresh rosemary. And then we're gonna muddle. We're gonna add a tablespoon of mulling spices. We're gonna muddle that as well. Now it's time to add our spirits. I have chosen to do two ounces of sweet vermouth and a cup and a quarter of gin. So this will yield about, I think, about a cup and a half of Christmas gin. Now I'm gonna set this on a shelf in my pantry for about two to three weeks, and I'm gonna shake it once a day. And get a lot of those nice cranberry flavors out. And uh, let's go ahead and make a cocktail with it. All right, now that our Christmas gin is all ready, it's been a couple weeks, it is looking delicious. I filtered out all of the, all of the spices and, the, and the, um, the cranberries, filtered all that out. Poured it in this mason jar. I've already used it for a couple of drinks. Had to try this one out to make sure it's good. And this is what I have left, so you know it's pretty good. Uh, so let's do a Christmas martini. So first we're gonna begin with a half ounce of maraschino. And then we're gonna do a half an ounce of port. Port is a wonderful, sweet, red, fortified wine from Portugal. And then we're gonna do two ounces of our Christmas gin. Let's retrieve a chilled glass from the freezer. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, drinking buddies. Let's give this Christmas martini a taste. Oh, yeah. It is delightful. The cranberry flavor is so solid. It is so huge. The cranberry flavor is like enormous. It's like this is 99% cranberry juice. That's how strong that flavor is. I garnished it with a couple cranberries and a, a little piece of orange peel just to make it look cool. The gin comes through a little bit. You get a little bit of that nice juniper flavor on the back end. I like gin because it has a Christmas taste to me um, on its own. I taste gin by itself and it reminds me of, of Christmas trees. This is a delightful concoction. I highly recommend you make one at home. I, I chose the port because I thought it would complement the cranberry flavor nicely while adding a nice sweetness, and that is totally working. I taste orange, I taste cherry. It's just so much flavor. It's, 
it packed into this little bit of a punch. And it is just a wonderful Christmas cocktail. Make it on Christmas. You'll, you'll be glad that you did. One of my favorite Christmas songs is Run Run Rudolph by Chuck Berry. So we're gonna go ahead and make the Run Rudolph cocktail. And we're gonna begin by using one ounce of our Christmas gin. Once again, you guys are gonna wanna make this at home. I'm gonna do one ounce of a weeded bourbon. So that'd be something like a Larceny or a Maker's Mark. Happy Van Winkle if you're extra bougie. I'm gonna do a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. And we're gonna do one ounce of apple cider. One ounce of apple cider. Spiced apple cider to be exact. Give this a good stir. I have garnished my glass with some rosemary, fresh of course. And to our finished cocktail, we're gonna do just a couple drops of absinthe. just to make Rudolph run. Run, Rudolph, run. <sighs> that is delightful. Run, Rudolph. Since I put the absinthe in last, that's the first flavor I get. And so, my palate is immediately hit with that anise and sweet flavor from the absinthe, and then the aftertaste is totally cranberry and bourbon. If there's an ingredient falling to the wayside in this, it's the apple juice, but just when you think you can't taste it, it's there. The apple juice is solid, and your nose gets such a great rosemary smell that rosemary is one of the prominent flavors, even though there's very little rosemary in the actual cocktail. Of course, it being one of the ingredients in our Christmas gin, the spices are coming through nicely. I put some mulling spices in the Christmas gin, and then also in our uh, spiced apple cider, there's spices in there. So it really feels like a cocktail that I would enjoy by the fire on a Christmas day. Run, Rudolph, run. All right, drinking buddies, my Christmas gin spectacular will finally be complete with this last cocktail. And don't worry, I saved the best for last like I always do. This one is gonna be the Sugar Plum Fairies. And yes, it's excellent. I'm gonna grab our Christmas gin. I'm gonna do two ounces. we are going to do a half an ounce of sugar plum syrup. There are actual chunks of plum in this particular syrup. So I'm glad I'm straining. We are going to do a half an ounce of lime juice. Perfect.
Let's shake this bad boy up. All right, drinking buddies. I've, I have a glass here that I have garnished with a piece of rosemary as well as two cranberries and a maraschino cherry. All right, drinking buddies, last step. We're gonna to top it with tonic water. Today I'm using Hue Light Tonic. If you have regular tonic at home, use that. I just happen to, I happen to like this Hue Light. So if you will, the Sugar Plum Fairies is a very fancy Gin and tonic. Visions of sugar plum fairies danced in their heads. Let's find out if that's true. Uh, yeah. That is a delightful gin and tonic. Man, if only every gin and tonic was that good. All right, flavors. Tonic comes through first. Cranberry is second. So this is a bitter drink. You got tonic water, you got cranberry in here. It's not a super sweet beverage, but just when you think, just when you think the bitterness is taking over, That's when you get hints of that wonderful sugar plum syrup. That sugar plum syrup is dancing through my head. I really like these particular glasses because they, they have such a small mouth at the top that whatever you have inside, you get just, just such a wonderful aroma from. It just hits you when you're drinking it. So the aroma for me while I'm sipping this is just boom, rosemary, boom, cranberry. This is the best gin and tonic I've ever had. Well, drinking buddies, it comes to the end of the video. And what happens at the end of every YouTube video? I'm contractually obligated to ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Um, if I don't do it, the YouTube people will beat me and nobody wants that. So please be sure to like, share, and subscribe and make sure to hit that alarm bell so that you get notifications every time I release a new video. And if you're on Instagram, I got a wonderful Instagram. I post stuff on there almost every day. And thank you for watching. Merry Christmas, that is the most important thing.